we want to stabilize a colloid by putting polymers on the surface of that colloid, we really have two different strategies. The first is adsorption. Since the solid surface has a high surface energy, things tend to stick to it. Now, uh, this does present a little bit of a challenge in that we can imagine three different scenarios. We could imagine something where we have a lyophobic polymer. So something that really uh, doesn't dissolve very well in the, uh, a polymer doesn't dissolve very well in the solvent of interest. Well, if we do this, what's going to happen, of course, is that the polymer will stick to the surface of the colloidal bead because it doesn't like the solvent, but it doesn't really form nice coils out there in solution. So this will happen if we have a large value of chi. We just have a, a polymer that's just barely soluble in solution. So as soon as it sees that colloidal particle, which just sits down on the surface and doesn't, doesn't, doesn't generate any conformational entropy. So that's no good. So that's bad. We could imagine having a lyophilic polymer And that, at first glance, seems great. Well, that means the polymer dissolves really well in solution and uh, flops around a lot. But what can happen then is that it just doesn't absorb very well. So the chains tend to stay in solution and not adsorb onto the polymer. So the best solution when we have a, when we have a, uh, a situation where we want to adsorb polymer chains to a, to a colloidal particle is to use something that is a copolymer. And it's got more than one domain. It could have two, it could have uh, more than two. And we imagine that we have an anchor domain that is lyophobic, and then a tail that's lyophilic. So let's color code to make that a little more obvious. So this will be red, and this will be green. And so what's going to happen as soon as we put that into the uh, into the solution, the anchor domains will sit down on the surface of the uh, of the colloidal particle, and the tail domains will be in solution and flop around and generate conformational entropy and stabilize that colloidal particle. So uh, this is the best strategy for absorbing polymers onto the surface of a colloid if you want to use those to stabilize that colloid. There's a completely different strategy, which, there's a completely different strategy, grafting. And grafting means that the uh, polymer is attached covalently to the surface of the, of the colloidal particle. And you can take particles and graft them to pre-existing uh, reactive sites on a polymer, or you can do grafting from where you grow uh, polymer chains from these reactive sites. So in either case, we have a covalent attachment. And we do this, there's two different possible things that can happen to our surface. If we have a kind of sparse um, uh, the, if the density of polymer chains is not too high, what can happen is they can form their full random coils out here. And this is called the mushroom conformation. On the other hand, if we have really dense grafting, the polymer chains are sort of next to each other and they don't have room to form full random coils. This is called the brush regime. And whether or not you're in the brush regime or the uh, mushroom regime depends on the density of grafting. 
So grafting density is just the number of chains per meter squared. And uh, you can see if you have a grafting density, the reciprocal to the grafting density is going to be the amount of space uh, per, per, uh, per molecule. We can imagine a low density grafting regime where the comparison between Rg, the size of the molecules, and the, uh, the amount of molecules we have, we can see that if we take the reciprocal of, of the, the uh, rate of gyration squared, we end up with the same units as grafting density, uh, that we have lots of space. So then we're going to be, then we're going to be in the mushroom. And if we have a grafting density that's high, in other words, much, much bigger than the reciprocal of the square of the radius gyration, then we're going to be brush. So we actually need to calculate the radius of gyration first to figure out whether a particular amount of graphing density is going to give us a mushroom confirmation or the brush confirmation. If you have the mushroom shape, we can see that the we can characterize the polymer by its radius of gyration, just like it is in free solution. That isn't so for the brush. For the brush, we actually use Elmont to get the thickness of the brush. So the thickness of this brush, Elmont, is just the number of units per chain, number of bonds per chain, the length of each bond to the five-thirds, and then the grafting density to the one-third. 